Welcome back to Living on the Edge. Join your host, Jake Beck, Product Manager at Ambassador Labs. This is your podcast for all things related to Kubernetes, developer tooling, API gateways, service mesh implementation, and more. Let's get into it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Living on the Edge. I'm here with Daniel Kotsat. Um, he is a ambassador at Codecentric AG. Um, I will hand it over to him and give a little more of an introduction. Yeah, I'm, I'm an ambassador for actually ASIC MPI working at Codecentric here in Germany. I am yeah head of API consultancy for us actually. So we do something with APIs actually, some people in, in, within Codecentric actually. And so I'm, I'm the head, but I'm also having a role of a senior solution architect because working in the field for, for such a long time actually now and yeah, doing stuff coming in the API world from, from, from a gateway background and, and moving on to yeah to do consultancy actually in regards of building good APIs there. That's a good description. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I, th- I think that's that's really interesting. What made you kind of like want to transition from, like you said, you were like more of like the gateway background. So getting the traffic to your APIs right versus moving towards building and designing and actually having like quality APIs. It, it actually was a process because when when you talked with people, they always thought, okay, then ah, I, I buy some kind of tooling or no, or I integrate some kind of tooling. When we look at yeah, open source products around, and actually, it was for me, it was not really fulfilling because we were always talking about technologies there, and it was sometimes really frustrating. But but it didn't get really a good value stream in the end because. We didn't change anything about the APIs, so it was really, yeah, some kind of tricky world because in the end, still when we talk about API design, it totally relies on having somewhere, maybe a proxy or gateway to 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 really cover things and um, make things easier for for the consumers actually. So really looking on the consumer side, being they are very consumer centric there. So it's 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 really, really a matter of yeah, a matter of time actually when when you do stuff. So we started around 2018 or something with the topic and it is it was still evolving at that time so everything was new Every, everybody was very pathetic about things and saying oh yeah it's it's the next big thing but in the end it was more interesting to really talk with people about what are they're looking for and and not really what to say okay we talk about digital transformation and all the stuff and here is a gateway or an integration solution and, and have fun with it actually it's really about getting deeper to, to the whole point actually yeah right like <clears throat> like the gateway and everything is great but like if by it at the core you have a poorly designed api like it doesn't matter what you put in front of it it's still just not good right yeah. <laughs> and is that what kind of led you to the consultancy is like you started to learn on your own that like you can actually like if you design something good on the back, the front gets a lot easier. And that what kind of like moved you into the consultancy role is like you want to help other people do that same thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this was this was actually the idea. We we talk with customers what we can do because normally when you when you are in the field and, and talking about ah, yeah, gateway technologies, it's always really technical. And then when when you talk with people, you you hear stuff. Like oh, we need some kind of portal uh, knowledge about and and all the things. So you're covering covering a lot of lots of topics actually by side then and say okay, there is a need. People have discovery problems. They have problems of understanding stuff and so on. And even they have documentation problems and so on. And and you really have to think about okay, there are these guidelines. We always hit them because uh, maybe we build some magic around in the in the gateway to to um, really facade stuff but in the end maybe it's better to to really yeah look at things from a different angle and the, that was a time where something like spectral came up and and um, you could see okay it's possible to really bring this guidelines to life to be tested and and linted and all the things around actually so that in the end it's it's actually a process and to be honest, it's 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 still a journey for 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 RC at Codecentric, really doing consultancy in the field, because it's you can do so many things actually, because every, when we look at the market, every topic 
which is approaching like observability, you can add API to it and it's then API observability and so on and so on and so on. It's really, and in the end, what we learned is really we do software engineering and we actually are porting these things to, to a more obvious context saying, okay, we are focusing on APIs, but we are still in this, in this, yeah, in this software engineering context. So yeah, just really, really, really API changed, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just really switching the, like to API forward. And it's definitely been like the trend over the last few years, right? Is everything powered by APIs. And yep. I mean, even as long as I've been around, it's like microservices and then people going even smaller than microservices and then running into issues and then re bringing things back together. I think Uber is like a great example of that where they're like, yeah, we went too small and they had a bunch of like scaling issues because of that. And they started like bringing things back together, but it's all API powered, right? Like every single thing, the whole idea of microservices is just APIs, right? At yeah. the, at the heart. So it, it is important that you have a well-designed API because quickly, quickly run into issues if you don't. Um, I know a big topic right now is API Federation, and you wrote a really nice article about it. Um, and I guess the first question just about that is, I'm sure a lot of people don't really know what that means. If you want to just kind of give your rundown, that would be awesome. Yeah, a API Federation yeah, is, is actually something people are not not really dreaming of, but but it is an is an approach because when we when we look at the gateway history everything was very centralized so having one gateway to rule them all and all the stuff actually and when you bring when we bring something in like like the, the the product thinking side so api is a product this api design first it's it's an approach to do api federation to be not that centralistic actually in regards of having a gateway maybe having the yeah, the control infrastructure actually to, 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 to be there centralized, but actually in regards of, of the gateways, we, we, we could do things that, that we really distribute stuff. So it's not clear that you have one gateway and you have to go through that as we see it still when we look at stuff like Apigee and all the, the bigger ones, actually even uh, Microsoft Azure is always this one big thing. And when, when we really think about federation, it's more about, yeah, being in this federated field saying, okay, we can really do things about. And when we look actually now at, at the vendor side, it's, it's not what we might expect at the moment with federation, because federation would also mean that I can use different gateways for different purposes, maybe in, in, in the future and have one centralized yeah, control plane actually there. So it's it's really about being yeah agnostic in the in in the way and and really think about oh yeah it's some kind of a pattern to really think about API gateways again, and I don't really give a damn about what what is the technology I use there. So the the, the teams can actually also decide on their own what to take in the nearly future actually. Yeah, I, I think that that's like really not API ag or not, a, not gateway agnostic, but at the same time, right? Like you want a centralized control of like you can do like it, it's not you don't need one specific thing on the back end, right? Like maybe just drop and replace if like something's not working for you and you need like additional functionality or whatever, but your control plane doesn't change. Yeah, even, even it could, could be interesting in a federated way when when we think about gateways and they have their specific languages in regards of plugins and so on yeah. and you, you you did a decision in the past saying oh yeah i did shouldn't choose that because nobody is really aware of writing stuff in lua or anything like that when, when we think about this engine x based near stuff so maybe we, we are more you used to do things and go and this this is something that I have that I actually have in mind that you don't have to change then the control plane, but you can really think about oh I take something different on 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 the data plane side and uh, maybe there's a specification or whatever in 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 the in the future actually to really to really drive this and say okay it doesn't really matter every control plane can handle every possible data plane gateway which is able to be a data plane actually. 
yeah, to, yeah, really, it's, it's, to really make it for for people and also for us in the consulting space for vendors this is maybe not the the the, the, the best scenario that they think about but in the end it's it's really something to, to to think about to be more able to yeah really rely on things and even might that, that we can say okay in this specific case because we are testing something we are not using a licensed a licensed gateway actually we we rely on something coming from the open uh, open source segment still but it fits to the use case we are actually dealing with at the moment so it's it's really right. about that so in the end yeah it's 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 mind shifting is a little bit of like what envoy gateway kind of started as right of like kind of a centralized everyone can have shared crds um it seems like it's gone a little bit like a strive from that as it, the project grows, but the idea is obviously very sound and it's an idea many other people have, right? Of like, doesn't matter what's running in the back end. We have this one specific to Kubernetes, Kubernetes, right? We have one CRD that can control it all. And yeah, that's, that's, that's actually the, the, the idea, having something really running there and, and yeah, in the end it's, again about auton autonomy actually not bringing people to to the point and say oh you have to use this because it's it's the centralized thing we have there because in the end it's when when i have this 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 api as a product idea i i don't need a centralized gateway actually because it's it it, it can maybe do things that i'm not expecting that that should happen there because of misconfiguration in in in, the, in a centralized way and maybe i will just test something and maybe test some some kind of configuration because i'm able to do in in reference to something like having a marketplace running somewhere and dealing with transactions and all all the things around so so the the yeah the the, the whole topic becomes bigger and bigger and bigger when we look more deep into the into the possibilities actually yeah, yeah, for sure. And and scale too, right? Like yeah. if as as your organization grows, you likely have more and more APIs and more that might be exposed externally is like your what you've configured the gateway to do might not mean meet the needs of like my API, right? Like Yeah. That that's 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 actually the thing because most people what we do in the consultancy area with our customers is really make clear that they understand from the beginning that every internal API is a public API. In, in, a, in a certain sense to, to really make them aware of what will happen when you do things in regards of security and so on and so on that, that we might have, have actually an impact more related and not to say, oh yeah, it's internal, we can do, uh, use something like basic off and everything will be fine. Yeah, that's, that will not work in, 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 in the idea of, oh, I could share this with others outside of my organization which could be still internal of a whole organization. So it's, it's mm -hmm. really about when we think about enterprises and, and this, this is really, really something where, where people have to think more and, and they are not just dealing with things because in the end, when, when I have a, a little thing only centralized, it's easier to, to replace stuff on, uh, on my specific idea or scene even and not to really think about so that, that's that's actually the idea of of dealing with with yeah with with this api federation yeah for, for sure me, i, I kind of want to dive into that a little bit further too like what i thought what you said is really interesting is about design even if they're internal apis designing them as if they're exposed to like the whole world right i i, I find that really interesting and like i hadn't really thought of it that way but it's the smart thing to do right because like even though maybe only you're going to consume it if what I build. That's not necessarily true, right? Like you don't know where your product's going to develop over the next six months, year, yeah. like, and then do you really want to go back and rewrite 80% of your code just because you didn't plan for the future? It, not necessarily you didn't plan for it, but like the product changes, right? Like every single one of us have worked on a product where we thought it was going down yeah. one path and you, you, you need to pivot at some point. So yeah, I guess, did you come to that conclusion from like learnings of like you did like kind of what I described of, you know, it would just build some stuff because it's all internal and then you're like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, when, 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 you, when you do API consulting and, and, and the way we do it, you, you really have to build APIs. And, and I was coming actually from this integration part dealing with, with big MuleSoft instances 
where nobody had a real clue what good API design actually is because they just mimic some some logic from from the old world, so this legacy stuff in that uh, at such scenarios is always quite yeah bad and mad and, and and dealing with it so i need some kind of integration pattern but in the end it's a legacy system and maybe it needs some kind of help to to get into in, in into the future and maybe get a better interface and what i saw in the past was really not to think about oh we do we give it a better interface no we we just look what what it does and maybe then we think about an api but we don't talk with a potential consumer we just think what they might need to use actually and and this is this is really something when when you learn that the hard way actually you you think about oh what can i really do to make it better on the on the other side actually and what we do a lot with customers is is really doing enablement projects really bring people to a specific point we, we have people that, that are really deep into the SAP context doing ABAP stuff, so they don't have a clue what a, what a REST API is or how they can really build them. And this is this is a good side, really bring new stuff, yeah, new ideas actually to people to to make them aware of what 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 happened so far, and and what is actually possible to do, and not just to say. Oh yeah, we do this in that way because we have a BAPI or something like in the SAP context. It should be the same on the API side. Don't and 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 this is this is something Lear, learning from how people use stuff. So it's it's really interesting to see when when really when people really think about about this user centric context and and directly saying, okay, I have this API to act like an external API. It's really bring to the people to the right point on the on the provider side, because in the end, you can't tell anybody who will use this API in six months, even in three weeks or something like that. Because when it is discoverable and and really findable actually in the enterprise or in the organization, it will be used. And and this this is this is one of the points, and this is really where you have to bring people there, and it, it doesn't depend on on having a specific gateway technology or either that. It's it's just about hearing what what users need and maybe adapt things, maybe not in the first iteration in the right way, but but learning from feedback, and then really providing stuff and saying, okay, this is the final the final thing. We 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 go there, and hopefully. We, we did everything right, so right, so that we don't get into the into the field of versioning and 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 breaking changes. Actually, so this is this is one of the steps there. It's really about what we call at Concentric at the moment API thinking. So this is what we develop for customers, giving them trainings and say, okay, you have to think about this. This is an interface that might become important over time, but maybe not for now. But in the future, it, it can get some important or more importance, actually. And it's really about thinking and, and really rethinking it again when it does not really work or you get back bad feedback, maybe what, what went wrong. Maybe it's, it's, it's the wrong technology you used. So be, so be more agnostic in that way. Don't talk about technologies with, with users, actually, and so on and so on. So you, had, you, you build a story about that or around that actually and, and and this is this is the fun part actually this is why we do consultancy in the field actually you know it, it sounds really interesting right and like i think what you're describing is like really like it comes down to like core fundamental software development things that a lot of us learn when we go through university but you quickly forget them as you get into like the like the corporate world right because like you just get thrown in on projects and they're like legacy projects and like you just kind of build on top of what's already there but like what sounds like you're doing is trying to like tear that wall down and be like okay let's think about this as like the api whatever is you're interfacing with on the back end right like think of that as agnostic maybe you're dealing with google on the back end and you maybe you need to build a facade so that essentially you could switch out that at some point or maybe you're building this for just one user right now, but you need to think long term, right? Like, yeah, that, yeah that, that's 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 actually the the most the most important thing. Like really thinking about what 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 you. Some, sometimes you can't predict this 
at the moment because we we are still in this in this integ integration phase everybody and to be honest i know that apis will be used in integrational context so th this is this is nothing to talk about actually but we think it's it's more about rethink the stuff because you don't really know a colleague of mine always states out apis are forever so it's it's really about they they will be there even if you change the company this api will be still there and maybe someone has then to change it totally because there was a misunderstanding there was some some bad conditions about that and maybe a technology changed and the API up front is not really prepared for this technology in the back end. This is also something to really to really think about. And this is what I also tell customers and even uh, the colleagues I'm working with. We always say, okay, it doesn't really matter for a consumer. What are you doing in the back end? They are not interested in that until it's not in, uh, until it's really working. When it's not working, they might get interested about what is happening in the back end. Mm -hmm. and will have ideas about oh maybe you choose to, the, the wrong framework or you you don't understand this or but in the end when it's working and working as expected no one is really interested in the back end no they so, just care that they get their response in like a, a timely manner right like that's yeah. as a consumer of an api you're like i want to use it i want to use it easily and that's all i care about <laughs> yeah. that's that's the funny part when you then talk with people about Oh, yeah, we want to use Kafka because it's so fast and, and you can do so many things within. Why are your users expecting this? Can they handle the stuff you want to bring over there? So in the end, you're asking a lot of questions to, to really make sure that you are still on the right track there. And don't yeah, I... lose track because yeah we, we we are just like kids kids on the on the fairground actually when when their new technology comes up everybody's running into that and say yeah. oh yeah i want to use this in the next project and i want to build something with it you could do this but in the end when you when you work or, or think about interfaces it's it, it doesn't really matter because no one is interested in in what you used on, on, on some kind of technology there. So if you, you build an API TypeScript or in Python, I even saw APIs using something like R because it's possible of plugins and so on. It doesn't really matter until it works. Yeah, no, and like, and that makes a lot of sense, right? Like shifting that, which I feel like it's really hard to get developers to shift that perspective, right? Of like, like you said, we all just kind of want to dive into like, oh, this is the new cool technology or the new framework. Let's just use this because like, that's what we want. But at the end of the day, the people that are going to use your APIs don't care about that. They care that it works, it works well, and yeah. it's 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 stable, right? Like that's what at the end of the day that truly matters. Yeah, that, that's why I, I ask a lot of co uh, colleagues then and still, please describe why I should use this technology. So when you when you have something like Java and now everybody's running into Kotlin, in the end it's still JVM. Yep. And yeah, it looks nicer when you look at the stuff on 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 the programming side. But but when you have some kind of interface, nobody is looking at the code of the backend of the interface. So it's it's really about yeah, you, maybe you will be faster, but are you really proficient proficient in the language? This is what what I tell people always. Always please only use. A language you're really or the team is proficient with that that that, that is the, the, the thing because in the end when i have to learn something new i'm slower yeah yeah because right I don't like... know all the tricks and, and and best practices mimics or whatever because i can build i think in nearly every programming language is available i can i can build some kind of interface yeah yeah right like pretty much any developer like you give them enough time like they can write an api in any language it's just the quality of the api is going to differ based on how long and how much they've used that language right like it's most languages make it very easy to spin up an api really quickly right like you could probably google any any language like easy api and like it's just you'll have the framework to do so but expanding on that is yeah. going to get much more difficult if you're not proficient in that and that's like the i mean like it, when i look at the like development landscape right like rust has gotten 
larger and larger. And so many people are using Rust just to build things because they want to use Rust. And Rust has a very like niche field of where it is super useful, right? Yeah. But do you really need to be building your like web application that just in Rust? Probably not. <laughs> you, you could do it when, when you want to play around and learn actually ideas of languages and so on, maybe, but but not in the context where we are normally working actually. Yeah? And, mm -hmm. and in the end, what, what we do by providing interfaces is really to transport data yep. from one point to another, hopefully not point to point, but we, we are able to deliver data to, to, to really make sure that people can, can use it in, in different contexts in, in the field of AIs or whatever. And, and talking about language, uh, programming languages in, in the context of AIs, it's so easy to just ask ChatGPT in that case, please build me a web server that is serving an API with, with this. And things come out and, and you can just really predict on the language. And, and when, you, when you are proficient with the language, you see so many mistakes because the sources are not that good when you just Google stuff or really go, um, yeah, stream things from, from Stack Overflow or, or everywhere else. And it's just not what you would really expect. So this is also something I, I don't see, I, I don't see there in the future, actually. Yeah, which really actually about kind of... Being a team, being profic proficient at, at, at one programming language, maybe two, and, and really provide services with, with the capacities mm -hmm. you have there and capabilities and really move on and uh, the users will be happy on the other side. So really being, right. being, being that, that user centric in that way. Yeah. Being in the consultancy side, obviously you get to speak with a lot of different people. Do you see that like mentality starting to shift or is it still a pretty big lift anytime you have to go talk to a new customer of like, okay, we need to need to like kind of start pushing you down the line. <laughs> yeah, in the in, in, in the end, it's it's for us at the moment quite hard to 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 sell something like enablement because it's 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 a big investment. Mm -hmm. so talking about half a half a year, one year, and can, it can take longer. So we're working with one customer for nearly three years now in, in, in the field. We we started differently with this customer, but but in the end, we are, I think, deeply two and a half years now in the field of uh, really covering this enablement stuff and we are not finished there. So it's it's really about bringing new technologies into the context, may be aware that, that people are willing to, to be a multiplier in, in, in the field, actually talking with their own teams and, and bring stuff into it. And it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's not the easy part. So what, what we are actually now thinking of bringing up more training on these, on, on, on the side, because of what we see is there's a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of, um, yeah, missing knowledge or misleading knowledge there in the field in regards of using rest API. So it's, it's, when you talk to people, they always say, yeah, we're using rest in the end, they're using something and and provide a json yeah this is this is the stuff we we, we learned this from a customer there a colleague we met in a, in a training she said yeah we are we are developing json based apis yeah nothing more they're just based on json we would like to do more but but in the end it's it's not possible because of restrictions of guidelines and so on and and really yet yeah, doing rest is a hard way because it's not the normal stuff and in the end you just share things around so it's 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 the, the developers see this but bringing up this to 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 a management level is also quite hard because you have to say then okay maybe we have a technical technical depth and this is some something nobody really will talk about saying, oh yeah, we, we might have some depth there and then ah, we, we didn't thought about that. So it's, it's really about making, making people aware of what, what is really happening, best practices and, and really bring on the principles even of rest because nobody really knows them. So like, like cacheable, cacheable being cacheable all the time and, and all the stuff. So around it really, and not just 
yeah, saying, ah, yeah, I'm, I'm doing this. And in the end, it's a lot of talking with people. It's a lot of, yeah, be, be, being able to enable or, or bring up resources to, to get enabled. So it's, it's really still a long way to go because it's not that easy. And people are so looking at this rest stuff now that they are missing, I, in my opinion, so many chances out there in regards of the other API styles available. And I can use events, but for this, I had to really understand what events and messages mean and so on. And, and even these, the things about gRPC, something I would, would like to see more talking about backends and so on. So because having something like protobuf, it's more type safe than, than having this open API definition. Mm -hmm. And, and in, in an internal context, being that safe, that type safe, actually, to, to, to be more precise, I think it's the best way to go to make sure, okay, internally, we can use this gRPC stuff because it's easier. Maybe it's not so easy in, on the implementation side because you have regulations. So some frameworks are not cap really mm -hmm. capable on this. They're, they're, they're lacking there. But then it is really on, on, on the teams to find best solutions there and, and, and maybe change mindsets. So moving from one, one framework to another and, and then say, okay, it, it's, it's working. We, we have this really good description there. It might change, but we are more restricted to stuff that is written down there. It's not like having the open API definition. And we don't have a clue what is really happening there. Somebody has written this down and um, this is this is what, what we are now actually thinking about to, to be more aware of, of the different possibilities there. Because what, what I see in the field, at, at actually because I'm deeply in, 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 in the German market, to be honest, but, but what I see there is we have rest. Rest and then these JSON types, when somebody is really saying, okay, we are not doing REST, but everybody is talking just about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And even when we think about Kafka and, and all the other things around, these are all APIs, so interfaces somehow. Yep. And and this, this is what people should be more aware of and really use it in, in the way it should be. And and this is this is something what where where we or we want actually be part of this enablement side actually yeah I, th I think that was like i think everything you said is great but i think like what kind of stuck with me right is like people say they're using rest apis when really they're they're not it's just it's kind of like you're just passing json around but and I, I, had to, I had to sit back and think for a second i'm like well anytime i've said i've used rest api am i actually like building one and probably not from like especially a lot of things that use like I think the, the big thing, right, is like the cacheable data. And I think a lot of people, that's like probably one of the biggest things people miss, right, is a lot of it's not cacheable. Yep. So, yeah, I, I think that's super interesting. And it's it's cool that you're kind of in that field and helping like move that like idea of like, here's like other options as well, right? Like maybe you don't need to do this. Like you don't need to advertise that you're doing this. Like here's just what you're actually doing. And I thought what you really said, like what about gRPC is really interesting, especially for like internal APIs, right? Because like, you know, exactly. And like, like they are super type safe, right? So you don't get that like ambiguity that you really can get with a API that like only uses JSON, like you said, like open API stuff. So yeah, I, I think, Super interesting. I think like gRPC definitely has a really good place. Um, I've even internally for like what we're doing, like it's definitely been like growing and like we're using it more internally. Um, but there's just like the like the general like a lot less knowledge in that space, right? But it's growing. Um, I'm I'm excited to see where it goes because I think there's a lot of cool things you can do with it. But. <sighs> Um, we are running out of time here, so Daniel, if you want to shout out where people can reach you, what you got going on next. Yeah, actually, you, you can reach me on LinkedIn. So there, there is a the, there's a lot of things I do on LinkedIn. Actually, um, also pointing at at, at a concentric blog post. Actually, so at, at, at a concentric blog where we we have blog posts around, around the whole API topic, mostly from from my side actually because I'm I'm more into it. 
because I can I can I can do this advocacy more than I, I than others actually in, in in the company. And yeah, maybe you, you can catch me on on conferences around in, in in Europe mostly. And this is so what what really to say in the in the end it's about thinking and not just just doing stuff and and uh, being being aware of that there could be more things I had than just what you might thought of that is possible in the field of APIs. Awesome. Sounds good. Thanks for your time, Daniel. It was great talking with you. Yeah, great talking with you. Thank you, Jake.